Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 4 in our fire team series and this is episode 2 of chapter 4. In the first episode we set up the behind the scenes codes and all that stuff that handles the scoring that happens in a match. In this episode we're going to start work on creating the widget which is going to display this information to the player in the game. So let's get started. Okay so we got the death, uh, the death match game mode and game state recording our points but we needed to display that to the player via a scoreboard so we're going to have two types of scoreboards we've got the shorthand one which is going to show on the center of the uh, in, on the player's screen right in the corner and then there's going to be another one where it shows every single player and their scores in in relation to each other so let's first of all create the widget for our various scores so i'm going to go into my ui folder here and we're going to the game ui and let's make our user interface for our uh, scoreboard and we're going to do a player scoreboard because it'll be a different one for our teams so we'll use a player one for now so with the player scoreboard we're also going to have player cards and these are going to be the individual slots for individual players represented on the screen so let's create another user interface and this one will be called uh, player scoreboard underscore card Okay, and let's design what this looks like. Okay, so this uh, scoreboard we're going to have is going to be um, no camera panel, and in its place you're going to have a horizontal box. And we're just going to put in here uh, a bit of text to be what place this uh, score is for. So it'll be some text, and we'll do a rich text block on that in a moment but let's we'll drag that into which the hazard box there we then want to bring in a a uh, progress bar this is going to show the player's progress towards the winning number of points they need inside this progress bar though we're going to have some information such as the player name and also uh, their uh, score so alongside this progress bar we're going to right click on it wrap with overlay And inside this overlay, you're going to tell the progress bar to fill the whole thing. And we're also going to tell our overlay here to fill the available space. It takes up all this space here. Now to get an idea of how this looks on uh, on our screen here, we're going to change it from fill screen to custom on screen. And we're just going to change the width here to 400. And this one here to 60. Okay, so now we can see what it's kind of expected to look like. And in this overlay in the two texts, so let's put the text. First one is going to be the player's name, which we'll put in the center of the height. And we'll give it some padding on the left here. I'll say let's go 50. Okay, so that'd be what be the player's name eventually. So we're going to put in here placeholder, player's name. Okay, so that's all good to go there. Get an idea of what the progress bar will look like. Uh, let's just increase the percent. Okay. And we're also going to put in some text again for the points into our overlay. Uh, so this one to be centered in the horizontal, uh, in the vertical, sorry, and then right aligned in the horizontal. And this will be the points. So we'll put in like 99 as the default. And on the right there, we're going to put in a bit of padding there of 50. Uh, maybe not, maybe the uh, 20. There we go. And give this one about 20 as well. And we may want to also change the size of this to be not as big. So let's change it to 14. That's looking better. Okay, so we got that bit set up. The, the rich text won't show here because we need to give it a text style sheet, which we don't currently have. So let's go ahead and create one of these. And you do so uh, inside our UI folder right click and going to create a, a data table in a miscellaneous section and you're going to choose from here rich text uh, style row and we'll call this one uh, my rich text styles and in here you're going to define um, the first of all the default text what it's going to look like without any additional changes to it so that's gonna be the first row it always is the first row um, so let's name it a default 
And then down the bottom here, we can define what the font is. So I'm going to go in here, change the font here to my Roboto. Size, we'll do 14. Um, two, we'll leave that alone. The color, we'll make that white. Um, and that should do it. We shouldn't have to do anything else. Okay, but then we want to make one for when it's subscript. So if we make another line here, and we'll call this one subscript. This is what makes it small and at the bottom. And so in here, we want to make this one uh, even smaller. So we're going to change this one here to Roboto. Make this one like seven, so it's half the size. Um, and then we're going to position it differently as well, which we'll handle in a bit. Um, but for now, that will do. So in here, in our rich text block, we can now sign here the text style sheet we want to use. You should see your one. Compile, and we're going to put in here first. Okay, so now you can see that we've got the first place uh, displaying here. Uh, however, it is not really anything fancy because we're not actually using this um, uh, style sheet to its best uses. So what I'm going to do inside this first here is I'm going to make the S and T, this part here, the um, uh, have a, uh, a style on it. So we're going to go and do... Oh. You do like a, a less than sign. And type in the name of the row. So subscript. And then... Close it with the, the greater than symbol. And then on the other side of the ST, we do less than forward slash greater than. And you can see now, oh, I didn't change the color of it, but you can see it's made it smaller. Let's just change the color of that to be white. Okay, and all here, and there we go. So we can see that working in action. Um, and that's it. So let's put that in the horizontal there. And I'm going to make this overall a little bit bigger, I think. So let's just go to our style sheet here. And I'll make that 20. And subscript will make 10. Save that. Compile this. There we go. Let's add a bit of padding to this. Only units. There we are. Maybe not 20. Let's do 10. There we are. Okay, so the other thing we're going to do is we're going to customize the look of our progress bar. Um, so we can make in use of a material to handle that. So if I go into my styles here and I've got background image and fill image, we're going to create two materials for this thing. So we're going to create the material first and this will be M progress bar. And this is going to be just a very simple flat shade. So we're going to change first of all the material domain from surface to use interface. And then we're going to change its blend mode from opaque to translucent. That way we can take advantage of that opacity pin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a four vector. So you hold down four and left click. Plug that into final color. And then I'm going to mask out just the alpha channel. So mask, the component mask. And I want to turn on the alpha channel over here on the left and turn off the other two. That would be my opacity. So that, I'm going to change by default to 1. In all values, we get a white square. Okay, and that's what I need to do for this one. So if I can now go back to my score, uh, the card, and the progress bar, we can go to background image, do M progress bar, and you'll get like a flatter shade. And But because we are made it, we've made it white, we can take advantage of this tint here and because we made it a translucent material as well it means we can change the alpha and it also respect that so i'm going to put that to 0.25 and i'm going to give it a slightly pinky value like so yeah i think that'd be fine okay i then want to do something similar to the uh inside the uh the fill image so go down to fill image, change this to progress bar. 
and this has a tint but it's just got a tint in two places which is weird about this so you can tint the image here but you can also tint it via the fill color and opacity so we can just do it here no problem i'm going to choose red and i'm going to give it an opacity of 0 0.4 0 0.5 like that okay um and then i'm gonna do a little stylistic thing that i've done on fire team which is i put a little border of red above it here so uh we're gonna go into this overlay add a border in and this is gonna be stretched right across but we're gonna make that one a tinted brush color to red or something like that okay Right, with that done, we can now go back to our actual scoreboard. So in my game UI, go play a scoreboard. And in here, we're going to have three of these things. So if we're going to have first place, second place, and then your position, your score. So let's do a vertical box. And this is not going to be in the canvas panel, so get rid of that. And this vertical box here is going to contain the player scoreboard card one there another one there and another one there okay so we've got a few things we want to change here obviously the knot can't all be in first place so the first place is going to be the top then it'll be second and it'll be you um and we're going to space these apart as well so it makes it a bit easier to read um what the hell people have got so uh let's first of all make it so we can change this first second and, and you text here so i'll go and edit my player score card and this is a text field here. We're going to tick is variable. And let's name this one as a position text. And I'm going to go to my graph and add a new variable to this. And this will be position text to display. Maybe a text field. And we'll make it instance editable so we can make each one different um, and then on the pre-construct we're going to take out our position text and do set text plug in our position text to display so by default nothing will be in there it'll be blank um one thing to note as well is that you may have an issue if you type in something you want it not to exceed it or not to push it away you want to keep things in line probably so if i put this text in a size box that should fix that for me too size box do width and height override and we'll make this uh 60 by 60. okay oh save and so now I can go to my player scoreboard and I can click on each one of these and I can type in what I want the text to display. So I'm going to do one, remember, less than symbol, and do subscript, greater than symbol, st, and then I'm going to close it with a less than, slash, greater than. There it is. And we do the same for each one. So I'm just going to copy this. second so two and then change the st to nd and then this one's going to say you okay uh, so you can see the justification of this text is a bit wonky that's fine we're going to go over to here and just make sure that's set up correctly by putting in some default text so testing okay <clears throat> and in here we're going to do vertical alignment and just make that center and the horizontal alignment we're going to put in as the right align there okay so now they're more in line and looking really damn good okay so next thing we're going to do is we're going to space them apart a little bit so pretty simple we're just going to go into each one and add a bit of padding so the middle one here top padding of say 20 and then the u1 at the bottom we're going to give top padding of 100 no, let's do 60. It just stands out a little bit. Um, I'm also going to make these two smaller in size. So at the moment, if I change this to desired on screen, I say let's do custom on screen and change that to 600. 
don't know, they, they get quite lost together. So from a design point of view, I want to make these a bit smaller so the player can see their score quite well. So I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to go to padding on the left and then a padding of 30. And then on the right, add 30 as well. And it looks now a little bit different. Okay, it's just enough difference in there. Um, and if you want to put a little spacer in between here, a little, little border, can do border here. And we're going to put in, uh, we'll change the color of this one to be, yeah, wait, what have we done? There you go, border. Um, and change that to something like this. Okay. Um, because I've got this border in here now, I don't need to add padding to the bottom one here. So if I change that to zero, I'm just add padding to my border, bottom, so uh, 25, and then 25. Okay, you get quite a nice little line going across there. Okay, and that's our scoreboard. So let's add that to our UI. And there it is. Look for player scoreboard. Drag that into our canvas panel. I put it in the bottom left hand corner, like so. A bit, maybe a bit of padding. So on the Y there, we're going to bring it up by minus 50. And on the X there, we'll bring it in by 50. Okay, and there is a completed player board. Compile and save that. So at the moment there has no uh it has no code to update itself or show the actual values so we'll do that in the next episode and there we go we've now got our widgets in the game ready to show and ready to code speaking of which in the next episode we're going to create the code that works behind the scenes of our widget to display the scores to the player so you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where all my videos are available early from just $1 a month. If you like what I do, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help out a massive amount. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone. I'm ready to play now. Put me in the game now. I came here to prove it. I'm ready to do it. I can't be afraid now. Put me on the stage now. I'm ready to rage now. I feel like an animal stuck in a cage and I'm ready to break out. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop This time, like the last time, you better get ready to race to the top I'm ready to do this, show you what the truth is I step on the field, it's time to get real, I'm feeling so ruthless My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop